Good to have you with us on Ed Schultz News and Commentary. Thanks for the view, the listen, the podcast. Go to my website, wegoted.com, ringoffireradio.com, and rawstory.com, and of course, rt.com. RT America, that's where I do my show every night, Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m., rt.com, and on Dish and Direct. All right, this was brought to our attention by my great friend, Holland Cook, media consultant. He sent us a piece of audio that I think is just absolutely chilling, and it plays into a story that I think was missed in the most recent debate. That, too, pointed out to me by Holland. So let's bring him in. Holland, good to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ed. You bet. All right, what what who did who a favor this week? I think that's the way we set this. Who who did who a favor and and in the news cycle who who kind of dodged the negativity? Unwittingly, Donald Trump did Bernie Sanders a huge favor because the Donald commands attention. If I could watch three things at once, I would have last night, but I can only watch two things at once and I was going back and forth between NBC and the CBS Evening News, and both of these marquee primetime network newscasts led with Donald Trump's Fox News feud. This guy commands attention, and as a society, as a culture, we've clearly demonstrated we can only concentrate on one thing at a time. So the reason I say Donald Trump has done Bernie Sanders a huge favor is because in the event over the weekend where Governor O'Malley and Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders appeared one at a time, Bernie Sanders said something which otherwise could come back to haunt him in a dialogue that would be edited uh, very capriciously. He confirmed that, yes, we will raise taxes to fund Medicare for all, And he continued that it's going to be a wash because you will instead not be paying premiums. Employers will be paying less for employee coverage. But you know how the uh, subjective editing takes place if the news organization has an agenda. So the soundbite that would come back to haunt Senator Sanders is, yes, I will raise taxes. And that is oppo research gold. But it has barely been covered since because the Donald Fox News Megyn Kelly dust-up is the one thing we seem to be capable of paying attention to. And uh, Senator Sanders' moment of integrity, like the uh, soundbite that you uh, mentioned we're about to hear uh, from Walter Mondale, is a moment that is too rare in politics, where somebody says, I'm going to give it to you straight. Yeah. I'm going to raise your taxes. That is one of the sentences that certainly hurt Mondale in Ronald Reagan's re-election campaign in 1984. This is from, I believe, the debate where he told the American people exactly where the country is and how to fix it. If this administration has a plan for a better future, they're keeping a secret. The truth about the future. We are living on borrowed money and borrowed time. These deficits hike interest rates, clobber exports, stunt investment, kill jobs, undermine growth, cheat our kids, and shrink our future. Whoever is inaugurated in January. The American people will have to pay Mr. Reagan's bills. The budget will be squeezed. Taxes will go up. And anyone who says they won't is not telling the truth to the American people. I mean, I mean business. By the end of my first term, I will reduce the Reagan budget deficit by two-thirds. Let's tell the truth. That must be done. It must be done. Mr. Reagan will raise taxes, and so will I. He won't tell you. I just did. 
He won't tell you I just did. And, of course, Reagan Reagan grabbed that, and he just absolutely ran with it, uh, you know, accusing Mondale of raising taxes. And what happened? Well, it was a landslide. I think the only state that Mondale won was his own state of Minnesota. So, Holland, you, you think that one's going to come back and bite uh, Bernie? Yeah, well, uh, the, the resemblance is haunting. I got chills just listening to that clip from Walter Mondale again. I think that was from the convention. I remember the crowd roared. And then Reagan, of course, raised tax 11 times. Uh, and think about Bush Sr. What ended up uh, as the dagger in his political heart was, read my lips, no new taxes. And then when he tried to play ball with Congress and made a deal and raised taxes, that was the end of him. That's right. That's right. Clinton came in in 92 and beat him. Interesting stuff. All right. Uh, how does this help or hurt Trump not being in the debate tonight? I think he has played Fox News like a Stradivarius, and they did it to themselves with that wise guy press release about uh, uh, him, uh, uh, how you're going to stand up to Putin if you can't stand up to Megyn Kelly, uh, hardly telegraphing that they are an objective purveyor of the news. And, of course, the Fox News base uh, probably loves it, but it inoculates Trump uh, against being called chicken. Uh, he is an earned media machine because he's turning this into a positive. And uh, look what's happening uh, over on the Democrat side, where uh, Hillary is trying to lure Bernie into one more debate before New Hampshire. Nobody wants that more than Martin O'Malley, who enjoys any exposure he can get, even though he's being drowned out by more powerful personalities. Nobody needs it less than Bernie, who is on a trajectory to win New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And he has political cover by saying, uh, I'm not going to do it if it's not sanctioned by the party. So we'll you know, see how that plays out. Uh, Mrs. Clinton is still pressing for that. But there's a lot of jockeying going on with to debate or not to debate lately. And I just think it's great, uh, not just for entertainment value, but because people are paying attention to the election process this early. Holland Cook, media consultant, hollandcook.com. Follow him. And survivalspeech.com, also a great you website. Bet. Holland, good to have you with us. All the best, my friend. Thanks. Okay, pal.